to the broadcast. We're continuing our series this morning, The 12 Greatest Days in History. And on last week, we shared with you that we was going to do the countdown from the 12th all the way to number one. On last week, we open up with number 12, the creation of the world, the earth. And that is in Genesis chapter one. This morning, let's open our Bibles to Genesis one, verse 26 to verse 31. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Verses 26 to verse 31. May God have a blessing to the hearers of his red word. So our 11th greatest day in history it was the creation of man. It was the creation of man. Now, mind you, he created the land animals, that's right, and man on the sixth day. And we put man here as the 11th greatest day in history because man is superior to all the animals or the land animals and creatures he made on day number six. Let's note, first of all, we learned last week that in Genesis 1 and 1 tells us what God did. And then from chapter 1 verse 2 all the way to the second chapter of Genesis to verse 25 tells us how God did it. So we get an explanation here in these verses. Verse 26, note that in your Bible. And why I want to call attention there is because when we open up in verse 26, it said, then God said, and note the next two words, let us, that's right. We don't want to run past that. 
because here it is in the first book of the Bible, we have the first strong evidence of the Trinity in the New Testament, where he said, let us, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish, the birds of the air, the cattle, and over all the earth and everything that's creeping upon the earth, I'm putting man in charge. Why? Well, think about it. Man was made in the image of God and man possessed the highest kind of life. What do you mean by that? Well, let me explain. Plant life possess an unconscious life. Animal life, like the hippopotamus, the giraffe, the bear, the tiger, the dog, the cat, animal life possess conscious life. All right? That's right. But man alone possess self-conscious life. Let me explain. What we're saying then, think about it. When God created man, man could eat the delicious food in the Garden of Eden and then look or take a look upward to heaven and first thank God, the one who created both the food that he was eating and the one that created the one who was going to eat the food. Oh, hallelujah. No dinosaur, no plant, no animal that was creeping upon the earth of the land animals could do that. But man, because he was in the likeness and image of God. Man is God's glory. Oh, hallelujah. Think about it. Note verse 28. Look, look. Then God blessed them. That's right, Adam and Eve. And we're going we're gonna to go in detail about that in chapter 2. But right here in verse 28, then God blessed them and God said to them, talking to Adam and Eve, what did he say? Look closely, verse 28. Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So what is he telling them? I want you, praise God, to subdue the earth and fill it. I want you to procreate. Oh, hallelujah. Now, think about that. Two men cannot procreate. Two women cannot procreate. No, 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 no. 
Did any of us pay attention in biology class? Huh? So then, another thing we learned here, he encouraged us, man, to enjoy the tree of life and all the other trees of creation except one. Look at chapter 2, verse 9. He said, and out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Note verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But look at verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you should not eat. For in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. All right? But now, let's note then. He was forbidden in verse 17 to partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. All right? Let's note in verse 19. This is where God gave man, he gave Adam the responsibility and authority to name all the animals. You know, that's one of those parts in the Bible I just wish I was present to see as these animals came into Adam's view or passed him and he gave them those names. Let's, let's look there in verse 19. Uh, he said, Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them. That's how it happened. Adam didn't have to run all over the Garden of Eden. God who created all these animals he brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And Adam, and whatever Adam called each living creature, that was his name. Can you see that tall giraffe with that long neck? When God brought him before Adam, and, and Adam said, Looking up, wow, what what shall what what shall I call you? <laughs> and Adam said, I know, I know, I know. I'ma call you giraffe. Giraffe. Huh? And he named the hippopotamus. He named the bear. He named the cats, the dogs, and then it said he the birds, uh in the air, the Lord brought them by. When the raven came by, Adam gave him a name. Oh, you're a raven. And when the bluebird, you the bluebird. And you the red bird. And you the sparrow. And, and, and you the turkey. And you the chicken. <laughs> Praise God. But here we find that Adam named them all. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, my. So if you got a problem with it, well, you better uh, just call Adam, okay? And the men after him who gave him these names, and we go by those names, okay? All right? So we see then, so he gave him that responsibility. He also... Uh, was given a wife. Did you see it? And that's where we want to go to the scriptures, chapter 2. Look at verse 18 to 25. And the Lord God said, It is not good that a man should be alone, that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Now, now look there. Comparable to him. 
Because what? Can you imagine when he was naming all these animals when he got to that tall giraffe? And the Lord said it'd be fruitful and multiply. Well, there was a Mr. and Mrs. Giraffe. Come on, y'all. Come on. God fixed it where they can procreate. He couldn't have two male giraffes because it would have been just them two and that would have been it. Extinct, over with, no more giraffes. But God had it so designed and he created these creatures, these animals, even man to procreate he had to have a male and a female. And look how old twisted Satan trying to get us to go contrary to how our creator made us. My, my, my. You ever gave it in the thought? Well, he tells us then, Read right in verse 18, God said, you know, I had all these animals pass by Adam and he named them. And that was Mr. and Mrs. Hippopotamus, Mr. and Mrs. Cheetah, Mr. and Mrs. Tiger, Mr. and Mrs. Skunk. And it ain't nobody but Adam, I just have a male. Well, if they going to pre procreate as it's in 128, remember chapter two explaining everything, but in chapter 128, God blessed them. Bless who? Adam and Eve. And he said, the man and the woman, and he said, be fruitful and multiply. And the only way they had to do that God had to create Adam a wife, a woman. Verse 18, when Lord in chapter 2, he said, I will make him a helper. And look what the word say, comparable to him. Verse 19, so out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and he and, and he and, and okay so but then the Lord let's go down to verse 21 and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam and he slept first operation being performed no emergency room no operating room but God caused Adam to be in a sleep and he took one of Adam's ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Look at there. No anesthesia. None of that. Look at God. Then the rib, look at verse 22. It's there in your Bible. The rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman and then he brought her to the man look what adam how he responded verse 23 and adam said this is now bone of my bone and you know who come on now y'all know how god do things in an excellent way i guarantee you eve oh i know she was just beautiful I mean, she had the right shape, the right size. Oh, she was just beautiful. Oh, Lord, her hair on her head. She just was beautiful. He said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Have you noticed where he took 
this real you ever notice where your real bills in a man? In other words, what I'm trying to get you to see, men, he didn't take the woman from uh, apart from the man's head. No. He didn't take apart from the man's foot. No. Where you can just step over her, huh? He took a rib from the man's side. Why? Because he was trying to show us men something that he brought her to the man to be a help, huh? To be a help. Meet for him. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 20. But for Adam, there was not find a helper. God created and made Adam a helper. Where she could walk side by side together with him. And look, verse 24, it said in most traditional wedding vows, this verse 24, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. You hear that in the wedding ceremony. And be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. When does that When they consummate the marriage. And you cannot consummate the marriage if you got two males, if you got two women. It ain't happening. Y'all can do it Satan's way if you want to. But if you're going to procreate, it has to be done the way God so designed it. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 25 of chapter 2 saying they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Oh, hallelujah. Because at this point, if you're familiar with the dispensations, this was, at this point in the scripture, the dispensation of innocence. Oh, hallelujah. Because everything was made in its perfect state. And it was placed in a perfect garden. Did you note the great rivers that flowed through there? Even the great river Euphrates, God just blessed them. And as he was given a wife, Adam, we see then here is the first of three great institutions given by God to man. And that is of marriage. Oh, hallelujah. That's right which is the family. You now the marriage or the family as an institution, human government as an institution, and the church as an institution. So we still have those three today. And we just say, you know, it's uh, God, human government, and the family, praise God. So we s understand as we wind up today's lesson, the 11th greatest day in history is here recorded in Genesis 1, on in the chapter 2, that God created man. Let's close with this verse. I love this verse and learned it when I was very young. 
And that is Genesis 2 and 7. For those who uh, want to agree with the scientists and all, said man was made from a tadpole, uh, he came from an ape, and uh, you know, go to your Bible. Just, just get it right. If we go to the Word, God has the answer. And here it is in chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul a living being amen hallelujah and that is how man came into existence the lord god formed him from the ground and that's why at most funerals and during the committal they commit the body to the ground because they said out of the earth of the ground was man formed and they commit him back to the ground ashes to ashes dust to dust but oh remember now in this same verse it says he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. And see, your soul will live on in all eternity. And there's only two places for all eternity where you dwell. Heaven or hell. Disney World is not an option. It's heaven or hell. As one brother who used to attend my church used to say all the time, it's either the smoking section or the non-smoking section. So we pray that each of you will come back on next week and we will deal with the 10th greatest day in history. And until that time, please, Remember to give thanks R2 GT. May God bless you.